OD stands for Organization Development. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us have, but probably all of us have heard that. Yeah. Um, uh, some people here may have even studied it a bit. Uh, from your perspective, what is organization development all about? Tell us about the field of study around that and, and what's the work of an OD profession? Yeah. Okay, so I guess if I break it down into two very core streams of um, focus and activity, there's two parts. One is understanding strategy, structure, process, and also building towards capabilities. So it's understanding the O part, which is organisationally, mm -hmm. being aware of the things that an organisation is aspiring to achieve. If not the organisation, a business unit is aspiring to achieve. Where that aligns to the overall strategy of the business and how do we build a structure or redesign a structure. So the O part of it has a lot to do with change and change management. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with uh, capability as far as what are the current capabilities of the workforce and what are the future capabilities that we're needing to prepare for with the workforce. So it's the tactical, tough sort of decision making around structure, strategy and uh, systems inside the organisation. The D part of it stands for development, which is about people. And so when organisational development started, there were very core um, programs around building business and uh, innovation and enterprise, etc. OD came in and said, but we've got to understand that humans exist inside our organisations. So we need to think about the humanistic side of our organisation, how people function. Because mm. if we build a system that's fit for purpose for robots, mm. people mm. won't be successful. Yeah. But if we build a system that's fit for purpose for humans and therefore understands the nuance of what humans need to do to flourish in the workplace, then we can build it that way. So there's two sides to it. Yeah. There's the task and output and deliverables of understanding organisational systems. And then there's the people side of it, of understanding, and I would suggest psychology of people and different fields of study mm. around psychology, sociology of people. So let me see if I've got this. To me, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds to me like it's a, it's a higher level picture Absolutely. of what's got, okay. Cool, glad I got that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're talking so much about people. If you could summarise the difference between OD and L&D in like one sentence, because when I hear people, I go, oh, what do they need to learn to be able to achieve the goals of the organisation or that business unit or whatever. If you could say in one sentence, what's the difference between the OD focus and the L&D focus? What, what is that? I would say, um, and it's sort of um, a grandiose statement to say, it's a macro consideration, which is about productivity and engagement. So if I think about overall results around performance and productivity mm -hmm. and how our people feel about working here, that's a strategic consideration for the organisation. Mm. As an L&D professional, I'm coming in to a sort of a, a more refined thinking around what are the skills, abilities, behaviours and results I need someone to do mm. within their job. So one is sort of set more broadly in an mm. organisational setting and one is set around more of an individual.